stem byte. Okay, for this stem byte, I want to show you something kind of cool about rotation. And you can see it with just a serial box. The object you rotate can behave differently depending on which axis you rotate it about. So one axis would be like right through the middle of the box, rotating it like this. And if I were to like throw this into the air while spinning it like that, what you'd see is that it's actually very stable in its rotation. All right, now by, I was another axis of rotation would be right here, like a line through the box. This axis has what we call the lowest moment of inertia. So this moment of inertia is a measure of how hard it is to rotate something. All right. And, and you can see here, um, if I were to toss this in here, I'll try this a second. I'll kind of spin it. You say it, it rotates fairly stably around that axis. Now this axis of rotation this is where it gets interesting. This actually has what we call the intermediate moment of inertia. It's kind of the in between axis in terms of how hard it is to rotate. And when you rotate it around the intermediate axis, the rotation is unstable. I want to try to show that to you. You see it kind of tumbles. Now what's really cool is you can see this with other objects as well. Tennis racket has several axes of rotation as well. So check it out. For this, I could rotate my tennis racket this way. This would be like the lowest moment. Um, and I could also rotate it this way. Right, that would be like the highest moment. But the intermediate moment of inertia would be when I toss it upward like this. The tennis racket is going to kind of like tumble as we do that. All right, so let me try this and see if you can check it out. You ready? All right, maybe you can see how the tennis racket kind of flipped around. It didn't just go end over end straight. It twists because it's going around this intermediate moment. If I do it this way, just like this, it'll be stable. Stable. But as soon as I turn it the other way, unstable crazy all right now people have known about this and they've made really cool toys that allow you to kind of play with that here it is so you see this toy it's shaped kind of like a circle and there's a little stick on it and if i give it a really good twist it'll be unstable right unstable around this primary axis of rotation will start to tilt but something really cool happens when that when it tilts so watch this Oh no. Oh dear. What? It just jumped end over end onto the tall part. Did you see that? So when it's unstable, it starts to tilt down, down, down until eventually it kind of flips up like this so it finds a more stable equilibrium, right? Again, because it's rotating about an unstable axis of rotation. Now what I'm curious about is, can I make a simple version of some toy like this? Like what if I took an apple, right, and I like put a stick in it, boom, and try to make the same thing. Okay, cool. So let me try putting this just right into here. Should we see if that works? I'll try it here on the workbench. Oh, that's close. It was like tipping over. I could hear it knocking. I'm going to try to spin it as fast as I can. Get it nice and flat. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's not working. Maybe I want to like cut off the top of the apple. Maybe that's important. Almost. So my apple flipper totally didn't work. But I'm going to see if there's other things in my house that might have those kind of unusual rotation properties. Sometimes we play around with these cups. Um, so let's try those a second and see if one of these does the same thing. So let's try it with um, our old pal Frank Thomas. If I rotate it. All right, so there's a lot of fun that can be had just kind of playing around with rotating things and trying to figure out where are they stable and where are they unstable. There's some crazy complicated math behind it, but at least we can kind of figure out what shapes cause things to be stable and unstable. Stand by.